such a thing to start too early in hypnosis or too late in hypnosis? The best answer I can give you to that question is, I don't know. And the reason I say that is because years ago, when I first started teaching professional hypnosis for Tacoma Community College, uh, they required that anyone who enrolled uh, be an adult. That being said, in my world travels, I have met more than one hypnosis instructor whose uh, teenage child was already skilled at hypnotizing people and wanted to follow in mom or dad's footsteps in the hypnotherapy career. And uh, according to what I have uh, been told, a couple of them were very accomplished, uh, even though they're not yet adults. As far as somebody being too old, uh, I had a gentleman take my course years ago who was almost 70. And uh, I believe if a person is of sound mind and has a genuine desire to help people, I don't care if that person is in his or her 70s or 80s for that matter, because Charlie was 86 when he passed away and he was still doing hypnotherapy and teaching it. I, I you know, I had a, I, I had the same situation. I have two people who were over 70 that took my course. So it's very interesting. All right. Now, <clears throat> um, when you use hypnosis, what is... Um, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to, to get here is in this project that we're doing, it, um, it is aimed towards people who are starting in hypnosis. So it's like a mentorship call that we're doing. But mm -hmm. I'm sure that there will be you no know, hundreds and or maybe even thousands of people out there who are already practicing hypnosis and they could get really good use out of what we're doing right now. So what I would like to ask one of the questions is. Which induction do you recommend for beginners? I recommend that beginners learn several different inductions, practice them, and then for most of the clients, most of the time, use the one you like best because your enthusiasm, your confidence, and your competence with a particular induction that you like will come across both consciously and subconsciously with most of your clients most of the time. But it's very wise to have some other inductions in your repertoire because not everyone will respond to your favorite induction. I know people who uh, believe that you should always use a rapid induction for everybody. And I know others who believe you should always use a slow, gentle induction because what if your client was abused? Well. This used to be a very common debate back in the uh, early to mid 80s when I first learned hypnosis. And my experience has uh, pretty much demonstrated uh, that uh, if you have a good rapport with a client, he or she will usually respond to whatever induction you choose to use, whether it's slow progressive relaxation, a rapid induction, or eye fixation, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, now, let me give you some additional uh, background information with that answer because uh, I have uh, practiced for over three decades in the area where uh, you have a lot of Boeing engineers, uh, Microsoft, and a, in essence a lot of analytical resistors. So if you have a client who is an analytical resistor, uh, they can frequently uh, resist if you're using a slow induction uh, especially if they don't visualize very well and a hypnotherapist is using a visual induction filled with visual imagery. So uh, it's very wise to master a mental confusion induction.